This is Northern Ireland, showing the main holiday points. Half of its scallop border runs inland, travelling over rich farmland and peaceful lakes. The other half skirts sea girt mountains, ventures up deep sea locks, through towns and fishing ports, along great strands of sand as luminous as pale Irish gold. Come with me on that journey, along the fair coast of Ulster, the most historic coastline in all Ireland where even in these modern days, the holidaymaker can still listen to the legends and ballads of this changeless countryside. This is London Dairy, Dairy of the Oak. 1400 years ago, St. Columkill sailed out to found Iona. Throughout those long centuries, Derry has written its name into history. Its handsome guild hall holds relics of those stirring days. Its walls were built by the merchants of London and withstood the great siege of 1689. Today, they are pleasant promenades, and where the men of Derry stood to their guns, flowers nodded in the soft breezes from the river foil. And the city itself has long since spread out beyond its encircling walls. This through the pleasant village of Castle Rock, but ahead of us lies one of the most famous beaches in the British Isles, Fort Stewart Strand. And its beauty isn't confined to the scenery. There's elbow room for everybody on this great beach. And those tumbling green waves, they're fresh in from the broad Atlantic. for the golden hours they spent at this pool, or just messing about in boats. This young lady seems to be recapturing her childhood, here and on the sunny promenade. Port Rush, the port of the headland. And on this, Ralph Moore Head, High Carnival is held in the summer months. I wonder what Charles Lever, the Victorian novelist who lived in nearby Fort Stewart, would have thought of this charming little crinoline lady. shares with the other Ulster seaside places that lovely quality, gay but not tawdry. If you want good company, here it is at the bathing pool or on the strands, for Port Rush has two magnificent beaches. Battle Castle Bay is hemmed in by massive fair heads home of the Golden Eagle and the Peregrine Falcon. Off Valley Castle lies the island of Rathlin, where Robert the Bruce met the spider, and Marconi sent his first messages across the Atlantic. All summer round, the beach and the famous tennis courts are gay with laughter and play. If you're here in August, the Lammas Fair is a sight worth seeing. It's not by chance, then, that some of Ireland's most distinguished artists have settled around the lovely villages of Cushion Dutton and Cushion Dawn. The Antrim Coast Road was the inspiration of a young engineer, William Bald. Sitting at tea one night, puzzling how he could throw a roadway over these remote mountain tops, he noticed that the front of the cake crumbled under his knife. There was the answer. 
With explosives, he sliced down the face of the cliffs to the water's edge and laid on the fragments one of the most majestic sea roads in all Europe. Another bend or two of the road, and we shall be in the town of Lard. This is the gateway to the glen. Indeed, it's one of the chief gateways to Northern Ireland. Lard itself is at the foot of a little glen, and I've spent many happy summers there among its kindly people without any great desire to wander further afield. to where White Head, with its wonderfully patterned beach of black and white pebbles under a crystal clear tide, shelters in the coast of Belfast Lock. Further down the lock is the great Norman castle of Carrickfergus, the stage door through which monarchs and marauders stepped into Northern Ireland's history. But don't mention Belfast Lock to a Carrick man. Belfast Lock, he'll say. Sure, it was Carrick Fergus Bay before Belfast was ever thought of. But today, cross channel boats glide up the quiet waterway to birth in the, heart, the capital of Northern Ireland and the seat of government of Storm. I needn't remind you of the Irish linen you can expect to see displayed in the shop windows. Well, this is the home of that peerless fabric which has contributed so much to the fame of the city and of the province. Mind you, Belfast is more than a great industrial city. Outside the city hall, in the baskets of flower cellars, you'll find roses from the famous nurseries of County Armagh and County Down. Though Belfast is young among capital cities, it carries its honor with modest pride. In Bangor, we look across Belfast Lock and its visiting luxury liner to the Antrim Hills, for we've crossed from County Antrim into County Durham. Antrim for men and horses, County Durham for bonny lasses, and I can think of no place where you're more likely to find them than right here in Bangor. If a holiday resort can be said to have everything, then everything can be said for Bangor. Oh, it's warm, my dear. And if you want peace and quiet, here it is, in warm fall. Even a sedate game of bowls. Though they tell me you have to be pretty good, for they play international stuff here. See what I mean? Yes, Bangor has many memories for me, in boats and out of boats. But I particularly remember one day when an elderly gentleman on this beach at Barry Home saw a small boy struggling in his mother's arms at the water's edge. Ah, come on now, he said. Be a brave wee fella. Have your bath, and there'll be a bright, shiny sixpence for you. Oh, thank you, said the Harris mother. But I I'm not trying to get him in. I'm trying to get him out. And that small boy was me. Don the Haddi. This name tickled Thomas High. The first packet boats, little sailing ships, sailed to Scotland from this port. These lucky fishermen are preparing to set out at sunset to stream for bayou, blocken and mackerel, or drop their hand lines for coddling and plates. The Vikings named this lock Strangford, the fierce inlet. For thousands of tons of green tide water surged into it from the Irish Sea. Yet here at Strangford Yacht Club, all is peace and marine beauty, and the yachts, river, glen, flying fifteens, thread their way among the hundreds of islands that stub the lot. Above the lock is 
Kalinchi, one of the famous Kalinchi muffler, very popular with forlorn maidens. A Kalinchi muffler is the sleeve of a young man's jacket with his arm still in it. For a long time now in our journey, the peaks of the Morns have beckoned from the horizon. And here in Newcastle, we stand at the feet of these legendary mountains that sweep down to the sea. Small beaches bind this meeting of mountain and sea, golden ribbons of sand and sun under the great granite peaks. It's not every holiday resort that has a range of famous mountains at the end of the street. There's an annual race to the top. Someday you'll climb them yourself. But meantime, there are so many things to do in Newcastle and so many nice people to do them with. Well... fishing folk who live along this Morn coast, putting out from their quiet little ports after the silver herring. But with one thing and another, it's a strenuous life. Mm, particularly when the uh, salt spray gets into the throat. taken us into Carlingford Loch, another Viking name. And here at Ross Trevor, we're still in the kingdom of Morn. Kindly Morn. Well, you ask for a cup of tea, they'll give you bacon and eggs. At one point, farther along the Loch Shore, it's said that the waters of Carlingford are magical. The story goes that a visitor wanted some of the water, and a boatman filled a bottle, charging him sixpence. Later, the visitor arrived back at the beach when the tide was out. With the heavens to see to the boatman, you have sold a lot today. The truth is that all the waters of the Northern Ireland coast are magical. Whether they run under ancient castles, or thunder against cliffs, or cream on great golden strands. And the welcome and friendship of the Northern Ireland people are like blackberries in a the hedge. There for the taking. 